Hello aviation photographers, spotters and simply aviation enthusiasts. Today I will be showing you how to edit aviation pictures in Adobe Lightroom. Why would you trust me, you would ask? Well, here are some pictures that I've edited. This one, this one, this and also this one. Maybe they are not the best, but uh, that's the experience I've taken in uh, more than five years of aviation photography at this point. So firstly, open Lightroom and import your picture or pictures. Uh, choose the one you want to edit and go to develop section of the application. First and foremost, what I do every single time before editing any picture is I go right here in the right hand side of your panel and click these two buttons right here remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections and as you can see what it has just done is corrected the uh, lens distortion which happens naturally with every single camera I can show you once again you can see the major difference that it makes and it just uh, normalizes uh, the proportions of the aircraft and what you have in your picture. And now let's go into the cropping tool so you can crop the image. Uh, here you, for Instagram you select the 4x5 ratio because uh, this is the maximum uh, ratio that Instagram allows you and simply crop the image as you like. Also right here you fix the horizon that is most likely unlevel. You can click the auto button to see how uh, it uh, straightens the photo automatically. Uh, almost right, I will just fix that a bit. You can use this uh, straighten tool, the uh, aligning tool that uh, works just like this. You see a horizon, you left click, hold it and follow it by the horizon and it straightens it very very accurately as you can see by the horizon you can click on this one like this and you can see that the lines are actually very very correct it's about let me do this just one more time yeah yeah i think uh, this is the most uh, we can get uh, in terms of uh horizon Great. Now let's go to lighting. I actually trust Lightroom and I base my edit on its uh, preferences. So actually the system um, already knows the best what kind of uh, lighting adjustments uh, it is best to make on this specific photo. So you need to click the auto button right here. I can see already th that this part, the sky is a bit too dark. So I will fix that. Uh, the exposure and yeah don't forget about the contrast part right here because if it's going to be around something like this it's going to be very gray and it won't just be appealing for your eye so I usually add contrast at around maybe about 30 and the exposure so they, we won't have very bright parts right here is around around 35 in this case yeah uh, the highlights are lower because we have many uh, white spots right here as you can see if i raise them we will just have overly bright image so i will just lower them a bit and this will actually allow me to add some exposure uh, just a bit just just about this part i usually tend to lower highlights as much as possible so that i make sure i won't have any um, white spots that like usually occur on the fuselage of the aircraft the whites and the blacks i don't usually change uh, again, uh, the Lightroom uh, usually knows what it, it is best to do uh, for these two points. You can try them out and see what works best for you, but usually 
I don't change them from the auto saying. Also, yeah, uh, the temperature point is very important. Uh, you don't want the image to be too warm, too, too yellow like this, too orange, and too cold like this. You want something in the middle. Usually what I do is I zoom into the fuselage, uh, the white part exactly, and uh, adjust the temperature so that uh, that white part is actually the widest it, is pos it can possibly be to real life. something around yes this might be this might be the closest let me just yes this is the widest as it can possibly get and as you can see you fixed the temperature already because before it was like this it was warmer and now we have it like this yeah yeah it is a bit uh, colder and it is just exactly what we need. Now the, the presence, texture, clarity and dehaze. These ones I don't really use as often and I recommend you not doing it so much because let me show you on this example. If we add at least 20 of dehaze, uh, it creates something like this, like this the aircraft is like simply too visible and the contrast is uh, is too high so because of this i don't really recommend you adding dehaze on a such high level so maybe let's try plus seven yeah i think that's a good value texture yeah basically you can zoom in and see that the texture point basically well, exactly as it says, it adds more texture. You can play around with this one for a bit uh, and see what works best for you in your specific picture. In my case, I see that around 15, I would say, is good. Yeah, uh, we, we've just added some details, but it's not as much. And um, yeah it stays as natural as possible. Clarity is also, is a, it's a mixture between dehaze and contrast. So if you have high contrast already, I wouldn't suggest uh, adding it really. Uh, what wouldn't make sense, it would just ruin the picture really. Let's try what works. No, I don't, I don't want to add any because as you can see, we have many, um, it only adds dark points like, like this, as you can see and it's not really needed in our case. Like, I don't want to add it at all. Uh, vibrance and saturation. These two, I usually tend to set to zero after clicking this auto button because most likely will add like plus 10 or plus 15 uh, to your image. But I tend to click on zeros and see what works best in my case. So let's see. So yeah, around plus 12 in my picture and I won't really change saturation because we will uh, go to saturation of every specific color in a bit. The tone curve I don't change at all because we have edited uh, the lighting in this part. So for anyone who wants to try it out, you can always do so, but I usually prefer to edit the image in this part. So lower you will have the following, these three points, hue, saturation and luminance. I suggest you clicking on all so you can see them all in one space and not click like them differently. So it's just easier. Hue is usually not needed to be changed unless you take pictures through some kind of glass, some kind of lens. Maybe uh, you were taking a picture uh, through a glass wall of a terminal. Uh, then usually uh, you need to change it. Saturation, let's see what we can do here. You, you just click every single color and see if there are any significant changes to your image. As you can see, the yellow for me makes significant changes because we have aerologic yellow text right here and the grass is yellow as well. So right here I would lower yellow just a bit so our grass won't pop out as much maybe just around minus eight like this 
green doesn't really we don't really need that because grass is already quite green uh, this picture was taken uh, in uh, July so yeah it, it's like peak peak summer so right here I would like to add some color to the sky so let's do it by raising the blues here so it will stay as natural as possible as well plus 18 i would say yes and it's already better if you see a color that you see is popping out too much and uh, you want it to be less illuminated then you need to lower for example uh, yellow right here if i want to darken uh, this text i can use this slider and lower it just like this uh, but I don't want it to do in my case, so I will just leave it as it is. Detail. Here you zoom in and use the sharpening tool. In most cases, sharpening is needed. I tend to apply it around 70. Let's go to here around. It's too sharp, maybe a little bit lower. Yes, it's, it's quite sharp, but it doesn't have any noise. Speaking of noise, uh, the next point is noise reduction. The universal rule is you apply around plus 10 uh, of noise reduction. Let's zoom in once again and see, just like this. All the rest that here you see is not needed. You can try this out, but it won't really change much. The main point is luminance right here. This is like the strengthness of noise reduction. And here you have almost a perfect image. You can check your before and after by pressing Y on the keyboard and you can see in details what exactly changed. Now I would like some details such as gradient and, uh, and something that you will see in a moment. For gradients, you click this button right here, graduated filter and you add a gradient by holding left mouse button and dragging it like this. And now I lower the exposure. I would also like to add a gradient from the top. I also drag it the same way like this. And you can see we just just by adding gradients we added much more texture and like realness to the image than it was before. You even out gradients by clicking around this point right here and making it as even as, as possible. Also, I will drag it. I can try the not the darkening gradient, but rather the lightning gradient. And this dark one, I could click right back on it right here and see, just make sure it's okay here. Maybe I will lower the saturation and I click done. And just like this, you can click Y once again and you can see how much it has changed just by adding the gradients. Now what I would like to do is add some details to the engines. I zoom into them and click on this button, adjustment brush. Right here you can choose a brush that you need. I think I will go with B because A is too soft as you can see and B is a bit a bit harder and I make it around the size of the engine by scrolling on the mouse wheel. So here I would like to add some shadows to the engines so that this GE90 engine is more visible. Yes, this is a very good tool but you have to make sure you don't like use 100% of it because it automatically makes it look unrealistic. So make sure to keep this point as natural as possible. Round 19 and yes, it's much better. We can see the engine itself uh, better, but it's still as natural as, as possible. Now let's go to the left engine. Uh, this one is not really visible because of the nose landing gear. So it doesn't make sense to do any um, details in uh, that little part so also I click done so this is more or less the final version of our image if you would like to you can scroll through all these points that we've done already and change some parts if you don't like what I will do now is I will export the picture 
file and export. Here you make sure you set the quality in file settings to 100 so that uh, Lightroom doesn't compress the image in any way. Also something that I would like to do is remove this part of the fence because it is simply too visible. You need to have an application, some kind of Photoshop. I will duplicate this uh, layer and use the healing tool. Yeah, this is exactly why it is best to have ladders that you can climb during photography so that you don't have to do something like this later. But still, I don't mind. And just by these few clicks, we've already removed almost all the visible part of the fence. You can check out the before after. As you can see, we've made a major difference. This one, like you look at the image first and all you see first is the 777 Frider, but also this part of the fence that doesn't really appeal. Now I export the image the same way as I did in Lightroom. And now let's see the final version in our photo gallery. This is the before and this is the after before and after. We've mainly worked on the light, but also uh, the, the texture as well, because we've removed this fence and added some details into the engines. So here is the final version. This was the tutorial of editing an aviation picture in Adobe Lightroom. Make sure to subscribe. You can also follow my aviation Instagram at sierratango.aviation and leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments. Thank you for watching and take care.